Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. How has your week been? I'm recording this episode on a Saturday in February. It is actually Saturday, February 13th right now while I'm recording it. And it was one of those mornings when I woke up and, you know, was working all morning and getting some stuff done. And when I went to kiss my husband goodbye for work because he works on Saturdays, I opened the front door and it was so snowy. You know, when you totally don't expect it to snow overnight and you wake up and you're like, whoa, whoa. So we had about four inches of snow by the time I woke up this morning and you know now, but it's about five hours later since I've looked and it's still been snowing. It is so beautiful. It's one of those mornings where the snow is just so bright that the whole house is bright on the inside. It has been such a treat. It's been a really cuddly morning. You know, I hung out with my daughter and we had a bath and you know, then I got to spend some time just taking care of me and I did some derma rolling on my face and put some serums on and some different lotions. So I feel all pampered and prepped, despite the fact that my face is still very red from the derma rolling, but I'm having one of those self-care mornings where I'm really just recharging and getting ready to go. So I just put my daughter down for a nap about, ooh, about 10 minutes ago. She is already fast asleep. I've got my cup of tea. I'm cozied up. It's snowing outside, and I'm ready to talk to you guys today about self-discipline. Yes, self-discipline. It is so relevant because here I am on a Saturday. I would love to be reading a book, but I'm going to record this podcast because it was something I had planned. I know that as soon as I'm done today, I get to look forward to diving into one of the two new books that I got for my birthday a couple of weeks ago. I got The Ultra Mind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. It's all about fixing your broken brain and how food can help heal brain fog. And the other one is actually called The Power of When by Dr. Michael Bruce. And it's all about how we can use our chronobiology for the best times to work out, sleep, eat, all of that kind of stuff. I'm not sure which one I'm going to dive into yet. But I'm really excited. I always love a new book and you know that as soon as I learn stuff, I like to teach it so it'll show up in my Instagram content and likely down the road on the podcast. So I'm excited for the rest of the afternoon, but I had to use self-discipline to show up and record this podcast because if I don't do what I plan to do, it becomes a habit. Then what happens is I stop following through on other things in my life and I just don't stay productive and I can't count on myself. So self-discipline is something that I have developed and I think I have an excellent capacity for self-discipline and I'm going to teach you some of the ways that I have cultivated that discipline over the years because trust me, it didn't used to be like this. Like I used to say, that I was going to go work out and I wouldn't do it. Or I said I was going to eat well and I wouldn't do it. And this is just not the reality for me anymore. And I'm always a believer in how we do one thing is how we do everything. So meaning if we procrastinate and push stuff off and, you know, try to find the easy way out in one area of our life, so maybe that's our exercise, we're likely doing that in other areas such as our relationships or our work or, you know, how we're showing up uh, with our health. There are so many ways where this shows up. So Learning how to be disciplined with your biohacking uh, protocols and your your standard operating procedures that you have for your health that you follow and you can count on by being self-disciplined with that, you won't just see a difference in the clarity of your thinking and your health. You're going to see it in every area of your life. And this is something I love to talk about because it is usually the skill that needs developing most when I work with a new client. When I was writing the show notes and the, you know, the podcast notes that I can refer to while I'm talking today to you guys, I was actually writing them last Saturday morning. And specifically, I made a note that I was writing them at 6.13 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Like, would I rather be reading or catching up on YouTube videos? Probably, but I always like to ask myself, why am I here? And the reason is because the Saturday prior, when I planned out my week, This was something I needed to get done and it didn't fit into my schedule anywhere else. And I am going to talk about my 
process for scheduling the week ahead in an episode coming up in episode 21 called the most important hour of every week. So you'll be seeing that next month on my exact process for that. But because I had it planned, I do it. And when something goes on my schedule, I do it no matter what. And there are always exceptions, of course. Like if my daughter were to wake up during writing of those notes or even right now, I'd go and be with her. But if it's within my control, I like to choose self-discipline. And I've worked, like I said, really hard for this to be a reliable quality in myself and to be consistent. So I know when I put something on my calendar, it's as good as done. And one thing I don't do is I don't negotiate with myself. I always plan ahead. And this discipline has single-handedly created the success I have today financially, with my business, as a mom, in my relationship, with all of the assets I've built up. It really has made a difference. And if you haven't guessed, that's the topic of today's podcast episode. We're talking about the power of self-discipline. And why is this relevant to biohacking and improving your brain energy? Well, because if you aren't self-disciplined, you won't be able to show up to your workouts consistently. You won't be able to choose the whole food lunch instead of grabbing pizza. You won't be able to be disciplined enough to go to sleep when your night routine allows for. Instead, you'll be staying up because you wanted to watch an extra three episodes of something on Netflix. So this skill is at the fundamental base of biohacking because if it is not developed, many of the techniques and strategies that I've been teaching you on how to build your energy and productivity, they will go to waste if you are not able to be consistent. It's actually really interesting. So three days ago, I celebrated my business's seventh birthday. So that was actually pretty fun. I'm excited to have made it this far. I didn't really have any expectations when I started it, but now that we're here, I mean, it's so cool. And I can see all the possibilities for where we'll be going in the next seven years. But in my time owning my business in the health field, one of the most common things people come to me for is either accountability or motivation. And they come to my Instagram page or my Facebook, or they read my emails, or they download my podcast, or they work with me directly. And they tell me that they're completely unmotivated and they just want that inspired, like revved up and motivated feeling. You know, the one where you're just like, yes, let's go. I'm ready for this. Like I'm ready to take on the world. I want to get my workouts done. Kind of like that feeling that we all have on January 1st or when we set a new goal. And they think that it's this feeling of, I like to call it like being all jacked up and motivated and it's going to motivate you to go out and work out and eat better and do all the things that you want to do to change your life. This is singly my favorite part of being a coach and probably one of the concepts that is an underlying theme throughout the entire coaching experience. Yes, it is important to talk about the the hacks that are going to improve your sleep and which foods you're sensitive to so you don't eat those ones and what the perfect workout plan is for you. Yes, that's all important. But we spend a lot of time working on the mind side of it, the discipline side, the consistency side, all of the beliefs that we have that are coming up on why we don't want to try something new. Things like thinking it's too restrictive, it's too hard, I won't get to do what I want, I like my choices. All decisions that we have made over and over again in our life that have created the life we have right now. And usually by the time people come to me, they're ready to make a change. So I teach them how to really make that change in their fundamental belief system so that this is the last time they make a change like this. Like I teach my clients how to make the motivation that they feel or don't feel completely irrelevant to the action they take. I'm going to say that again. The biggest thing I teach is I share with my clients how to take action on what they want, irrelevant of how they feel, irrelevant if they feel motivation or not. Their action has nothing to do with how they feel. They don't have to feel motivated. They don't have to feel excited. They don't have to feel all rah-rah. They don't have to feel positive because if you're wanting to make the change for your life, it's about consistently showing up in the way that is going to create that life. And if you're always relying on how you feel, then you're never going to be taking the actions you want. We desire that feeling of motivation in order to take action. And when we do that, things never get done. 
Motivation doesn't happen to you. If you're sitting around waiting to feel motivated, I have news for you, it's not gonna happen. Motivation is something you generate. So regardless of whether I feel motivated or not, it has zero impact on what I decide to do that day. So I consistently use my brain to make my decisions and not let my emotions make my decisions. I call this concept thinking greater than you feel. I allow my logical, long-term thinking brain to outweigh my emotional, short-term thinking reaction to be what guides my life. So I'm going to say that again. I use my thinking brain that is all about long-term what I want, And I rely on that to make my decisions instead of my short-term emotional responses to what is going on in the moment. This is where discipline is so important. Discipline comes in and carries you the rest of the way when motivation won't. Because you're right, sometimes we wake up and we feel really motivated to work out or really motivated to eat exactly what we planned. And those are the easy days, but we know that that's not the case every time. So that skill of discipline that you cultivate is what carries you all the way through your journey when the motivation is lacking. Another reason that we cannot rely on motivation is because it's really easy to feel motivated when you start something. So we have this expectation that we'll just feel motivated all the time. But the fact is the reason we're feeling motivated is because it's new and it's exciting and you're brain loves new and exciting because let's think about this your brain as a, as an evolving brain has three jobs and i was taught this by brooke castillo uh, through her podcast that i've listened to and it's called the motivational triad your brain only wants to do three things it wants to seek pleasure it wants to avoid pain, and it wants to minimize the amount of effort you have to go through. So if you want to start biohacking your health, at the beginning, it's exciting. This is something new, like you've never done this before, or it's really cool, or you just heard a podcast about it, and you think this is the thing that's going to be what is going to make all the difference for you, and your brain is getting plenty of dopamine. So that's a neurotransmitter that's involved in pleasure, and that newness is making your brain explode with dopamine. It overpowers the avoid pain, minimize effort, because right now your brain is seeking pleasure of new, of exciting. This is why it's so easy to do stuff for the first week or two and stay in, in and be motivated. Then what happens is what I call the middles. This is that point in that journey when the newness wears off and it's not as exciting anymore and there's not changes happening all the time and perhaps you know there's a level off in the results that you're seeing for a little bit before they kick up again or you know this is just that point where your brain starts to get fidgety and wants to start changing things and wants to start making it new and exciting again even though what you're currently doing is working that is the most fascinating thing it's what we are doing and implementing thus far is working. But because it's not new and exciting two or three weeks in, we want to change it all up. And that's where we start running into trouble. So once the newness wears off, you're now left with those same three things that your brain is focusing on. Seek pleasure, avoid pain, and minimize effort, except you're not getting that dopamine response from having something new. There is less pleasure to seek because you are in the work of change. You are in the part that requires effort and focus and consistency and discipline. But here's the thing. It's likely going to get boring. It might even be monotonous. You might be doing the same thing every single day. So I want you to think about this. For me, I get up in the morning. And then I work. I sit at my desk and I work and I get my stuff checked off my to-do list and I do exactly as I planned. Then I exercise. Then I wake up my daughter. Then I eat eggs and half an avocado. And then I play with my daughter. And then she naps. And while she naps, I have work. And then at the work, at the end of the work, I have lunch. And then I wake up my daughter and I play with her again. And I might work again. So as you can see, there's no newness in this. I have been in this pattern continuously for, oh gosh, probably six months in this nap schedule season right now. 
my brain really wants to avoid this pain of boredom and monotony. Like, it's the same routine. It's doing the same monotonous tasks, my workouts, my everything. It's just showing up doing similar things. And my brain really wants to minimize the effort. And when you begin working out and prepping food and being productive, that's all the opposite of minimizing effort. So our brain decides to seek pleasure elsewhere when we are in the middles, the the repetitive work, the daily actions that are going to create change. It is monotonous to your brain. So we try to convince ourselves that we need something new. And here's how this shows up. Oh, I'm just a... I'm just going to tweak my food. Yeah, I'm going to add in a treat day because, you know, I've been doing this for so long and I definitely deserve it. I'm going to have an extra treat this weekend. Or we change our workouts, meaning like, you know, I just want to speed this up. So maybe I'll add half an hour extra cardio two days a week. Or heck, you just skip a day. Or you add a day. Or you change up the amount of cardio. Like there's so many things that we try to do and tell ourselves it's it's for the benefit of what we are doing when actually we are just bored of the monotony. Now, I do want to say, if you're making a change to anything you're doing with your health, it has to be because you have been super consistent and what you are doing hasn't been working and giving you results. Meaning like if you've been doing the same thing for three, four weeks and you haven't been seeing any changes in your result, then yes. But most of the time we want to start making changes without having been consistent. So we can't really tell what's working or not. So this is where self-discipline comes in to be consistent so that you can actually tell if you need a change to your routine or if you're just bored. And I'm going to tell you, In 99% of people and of the cases, the changes are being made because you're bored. But the oddest part is it's like they're getting results. Their brains just want to change it to make it faster or have the results quicker. This is where the work comes in of staying focused. And the actions that you take every single day are what keep you driving forward. Nothing else. My most successful clients I have are the ones that can tolerate routine and monotony more than anyone else. Hear that again. My most successful clients are the ones that can tolerate routine and monotony more than anyone else. So you need to develop your skill for allowing boredom without feeling like you need to act on it and change stuff and make it exciting. You need to learn to follow through on your plans even when you don't feel like doing it. You need to hear your excuses as just that, excuses. This is how you strengthen your discipline. This is what will carry you when your motivation the first two weeks fades away and you're left in real life. This is the real grind of success. It is repetitive and it is not very exciting, but this is your work. Now, I don't think we can talk about self-discipline without also talking about excuses. I was asked a really good question on Instagram. I set a call out for, you know, questions people might have had to inspire podcast ideas. And someone asked me, how do you tell the difference between if it's like you need that self-care and you need to take that break or it's just an excuse? And this is such a good question because I think most people actually don't know the difference between if their brain is making excuses or they are telling themselves, oh, it's okay, you deserve this break. So a good example of this is you tell yourself, you know, I don't feel like doing it because I'm really tired or like I don't feel like recording this podcast because I'm really tired. Say, for example, like my, say if my baby was up last night or maybe you ate processed foods all day yesterday and your brain is really low energy, so you're debating skipping maybe your workout or Maybe you want to eat a sandwich instead of the whole food lunch you planned, or you want to skip out on the end of work and just crash onto the couch and watch Netflix, okay? So because your brain is telling you you're tired and this is what you want to do, your brain tells you, hey, it's okay. You're tired. You deserve this. You know what? Just just take a small break. It would feel really good just to grab Chips Ahoy's cookies and maybe sit on the couch and, oh, we'll watch a couple reruns of The Office. I'll do it after. Just a just a quick 20 minute break. 
And this exactly is what my husband does. And I've spoken with him about this and he gave me permission to share this, but this, this is how his brain works. This is when he gets into that point of work where he feels discomfort, whether he's bored, whether he's frustrated with what he's doing, this is where his brain goes. Just take a break, grab some cookies and let's just settle into the office. But the problem is, like I said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. He is prioritizing how he feels in that moment over something that he has planned to do in advance. But I mean, another good question would be like, how do you tell if your body's really tired and you actually need to sleep in or take a day off? Well, the difference is what you do for your self-care, because this is why we tell ourselves, take a day off, take the weekend off, have a nap go to sleep, sleep in tomorrow. It's because we tell ourselves we're taking care of ourselves. But the way to tell the difference between an excuse and rest that your body actually needs is what you do for your self-care. This is where understanding the concept of buffering comes into play. So buffering is taking part in any type of action as a way of escaping or stopping the process of feeling and negative emotions. So for example, like if you're feeling stressed out or you don't want to work and you're feeling like you're in that procrastination state, if you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling foggy and you don't like how you feel, it's really uncomfortable. And what you do is you watch Netflix or you eat or you online shop as a way to stop feeling those emotions. That is buffering. Real self-care isn't used as an escape from what you're feeling. Real self-care is how you connect with yourself and what is going on. So if buffering is feeling stress and then going and eating out of the fridge, real self-care would be if you're feeling that stress, say for example, you're scared of putting a product out into the world and having people judge it or writing a piece of content and feeling vulnerable, instead of doing the work and getting it done, you are letting that stress and overwhelm dictate what you do. And instead you watch YouTube or you check your emails. It takes you out of that feeling because it's not immediate. It doesn't feel like it has to be done now. This is buffering. So like I was saying, real self-care in this instance would be pushing back from your desk (sighs) take a deep breath and ask yourself, like, what's going on here? Why am I feeling like this? What am I thinking right now? What's actually going on? Real self-care is not escaping your feelings and hiding. Real self-care is actually figuring out, hey, self, what can I do to actually address the problem instead of putting a band-aid over it? So going to watch Netflix or eat is a band-aid solution. It does not actually address the stress or fear or overwhelm or whatever's coming back. It just kicks it further down the road. It's going to come back and you haven't actually dealt with it. Real self-care is taking care of yourself. If you spend all this time buffering, you can miss the real reason for why you are feeling the way you're feeling. You don't actually get to tap into that. And so Really checking in with yourself is such a wonderful solution. And this is where you harness the power of self-coaching. And I can do an entire episode on this in the future if this is something that's interesting to you. But this is where you work with a coach. Working with a coach is so powerful because a good coach will help you see your thinking in a way that you can't because you're seeing it from the inside of your brain, right? Like a coach's job is to come in, listen to you deeply and observes the patterns of how you are thinking and behaving and then gives that information to you and allows you to make the choice whether or not you still want to think and act this way. It's really hard to see when you're actually in the situation, but someone who is a neutral third-party perspective can see some things that we can't. And that's personally for me what I have found to be so helpful in working with a coach over the last few years. So with the example of my husband, his brain was telling him he had already put in some work and that was good enough for the day and it's break time. So he'd go and eat cookies. But by coaching his brain, I was able to show him that it was fear coming up again. 
Specifically, the fear that he might be putting all of this time into this this endeavor that he's working on and fail and lose a bunch of money. So if you don't know about our journey, we actually, my husband and I launched an Amazon product last year and we loved our product. It, It was so useful. We still use it to this day in our house, but it wasn't a winning product because the market was saturated and we weren't able to differentiate enough. But we had learned so much from that process that we are in phase two of doing this again with a different product. But with that product, we ended up liquidating at a $25,000 loss. And I can't blame him, but right now his brain is scared that it's going to happen again. And losing that money again, if it happened, would make him feel a way he doesn't want to feel. So his brain solved that problem for him by telling him he deserved a break. Meaning, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. Oh my gosh, what if this all happens again? We should take a break. Go watch some TV. Buffer with sugar because it feels better in the moment to escape that fear than being in that vulnerable place where you come up against some of your biggest fears and learn that they are your thoughts and learn that those thoughts cannot hurt you and that you get to decide what you want to think about all of the circumstances in your life and what you have learned. And if you want to grow and do bigger things, it requires putting yourself out there at the risk of failure, right? But this is just like one example of how you can get results with coaching. And the thing is, I know from doing this for so long, I'm really good at it. I mean, as far as it comes to biohacking, we all know that we need sleep. We all know that we need to eat well and exercise, and sometimes we just need a bit of education on how to tweak certain aspects to get better results, but what ends up happening is we need coaching on the way our brains have made decisions our entire lives. So if you're not working with a coach right now on your health and on your consistency and your discipline, I'd invite you to work with me. You'll hear more about my coaching program, Becoming Limitless, next week as I'm opening up four spots on my calendar for one-on-one clients who are ready to completely develop a consistent health routine that has them full of energy, clarity, and focus. I offer full accountability, weekly one-on-one coaching, and results. So basically... You're running your business. You have a lot on your plate. You are making decisions that are growing your life and moving it forward. And you may not have time to focus on all the nuances of your health. So you are able to outsource your health to me. And together, we create the protocol for your health that is going to have you feeling really good so that you can show up to your business sharp, clear, and focused so you can scale at a much faster rate because you have much more to give. Then I am going to teach you how to follow that consistently. If you know already that you're like, I want one of those spots, I don't even need to wait until next week. If you're ready to work with me, I'd invite you to book a consultation. You can do that by going to tanessashears.com forward slash work with me. The link will be in the description. So Like I said, next week's episode is all going to be on why I personally invest in coaching. And at the end of that episode, I am going to talk about a bit of the details of this coaching program that I run, Becoming Limitless, and how you can join me and really improve your health and your brain and eliminate brain fog over the six-month time we work together. So to bring it back to the question that we Asked at the top of this episode, how do we tell the difference between if we need a genuine rest day or if it's just an excuse? The answer to that question is it depends what you do with your self care. If you are aware of your decision making and genuinely need rest and you know why you are doing it and you have processed through the emotion you aren't enjoying, then yes, take a break. Because at the end of the day, there is something that I really want to share with you. We think that self-discipline is something that we do in contrast to self-care and relaxation. I am firmly of the belief that self-discipline is self-care. Self-discipline allows us to work towards the future that we want. And that is self-care because we are staying focused on the bigger picture for our life. And the more times that you can come face to face with discomfort and have to practice self-discipline and decide that you are still committed, the faster you are going to build that mental toughness that comes hand in hand with self-discipline. 
I'm going to take you through four of the most common thoughts that I hear at, that our brain loves to kick up as excuses. My clients tell me these ones all the time. These are thoughts that we have that I am constantly coaching on. And what I really like to do is I like to teach you how to call BS on these thoughts, these most common thoughts that sound like they are in self care of us, but they're actually just garbage excuses. So number one, we like to tell ourselves, I'm tired. But here's what I wanna ask of you. Why does tired have to be a problem? I want you to think if you have ever done anything while you're tired before, of course you can. So we can't use this as just a blanket excuse to not take action. I want you to think about this example as well. This one really helps. So for example, I, I, love Tony Robbins and everything that he does. And it's on my life goal list to go to one of his in-person seminars one day. So if I was at the end of my day and let's say I was feeling completely wiped out and I was feeling tired and exhausted and I didn't have the energy to do my workouts or to cook food and I'm just too tired. If my phone rang and Tony Robbins people were on the phone and they said, Tanessa, Pack your bags. We're going to have a helicopter pick you up in 20 minutes and take you to Tony Robbins uh, Resort and you're going to meet him in person. Are you up for it? You know what I wouldn't say? I'm too tired. I guarantee you in that moment, I would be able to find the energy and my body would just be overcome. So what that tells me is that tired is more something I was doing physically with my body being collapsed being small, thinking slow and thinking tired. Like that is something I am doing. But if I know, if I got invited to Tony Robbins private island right now to meet him in person, would I still feel tired? The answer is heck no. And this tells me that tired doesn't need to be a problem to take action. So I call BS. Every time I tell myself I'm tired, I'm like, nah, nah. Not likely. I mean, there are times when you genuinely are tired, but most of the time for me, I find it's a garbage excuse. Another um, common thought that I deal with with clients is just, I don't feel like it. But at the end of the day, like we talked about, it is your job to think greater than you feel. You don't have to feel like it in order to get it done. So if we have this belief that we only take action when we feel like it, well, yes, we're not going to get anything done. But If I decide today that my actions are irrelevant to how I'm feeling in the moment, it doesn't matter what I feel like. If I plan it, I'm going to do it. Then I develop that consistency and discipline. Another one is I'm bored. People tell me they're bored all the time. Again, why does this have to be a problem? Monotony equals results. You want to know the secret of my most successful clients? I already told you they have those simple, repeatable outcome focused plans and they complete them every single day. They take action if they don't feel like it because it is what creates results. It isn't sexy. It isn't a quick fix. It just works. Another thought that I hear all the time is just, well, I don't want to. Well, you're not going to want to most of the time, but if you decided from a place of logical thinking, when you're thinking about your future, that this is what you want for your life, then that is what you have to make your decisions based on, not what you feel like in the moment. You can't expect to want it all the time and still take action. The other excuse I hear is, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Like this is really, I see this with workouts all the time. Yeah, yeah, I just ran out of time. I'm going to plan it for tomorrow. And I mean, you could. You could just plan it for tomorrow. But what this teaches your brain is you don't have your own back. And after years of coaching, Dozens of clients. This is one thing I've learned. The people with the most self-discipline have the best relationships with themselves. They can count on themselves. They know they're always going to follow through on what they plan. They don't guilt trip or shame themselves for making mistakes. They're resilient and they are persistent and they have their own back no matter what. I am always encouraging my clients to develop their self-discipline muscle and I'm always working on it myself. It's like if you went to the gym and you wanted stronger biceps, that's not going to happen from, you know, doing one or two bicep curls. It's by doing sets of reps, 12 reps, three sets, two to three times a week for months before we start to really feel the results. And we expect that just because, you know, we showed up one or two times that our self-discipline is developed, but that's not the case. So 
I really want you to watch for those thoughts, those, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, I'm bored, I don't want to, I'll do it tomorrow. All thoughts that are not serving you in reaching your higher purpose, okay? Now, I want to share with you something that I've actually been doing to create self-discipline in myself. It is an action strategy that you can start doing today. So anytime I hear my brain start to complain, and those are the excuses we just talked about, my brain loves, I don't want to, I'll do it later, and I don't feel like it, I take action on exactly what I'm resisting right away. I'm training my brain that that voice that holds me back in my head, you know, that one that's the complaining, do it later, you deserve this. I'm training my brain that that is the trigger I need to hear to get moving. I've been using this brain training technique and I've used it twice just the other morning. And it's why I got my workout and my hot cold contrast shower done, even though I didn't really want to. And because of this, I'm constantly depositing effort into the bank of self-discipline. It builds, it accumulates, it grows, it compounds. And this improves my relationship with myself. So when I hear those voices in my head, as soon as I hear like the, I'm tired, I stand up, And I go upstairs and I put my gym gear on and I get busy. I do not give myself time to negotiate. And I got to say, it feels really good to be in a place where I like who I've become. And I know that you can do it too. You have the potential and the possibility to make those decisions for yourself. And it comes from you being willing to meet with that discomfort and know that it's not going to feel good every time and being willing to do it because the life you have pictured for yourself is so much greater than what you currently have or are experiencing. Mental toughness does not have to feel so tough. I've actually kind of learned to like it, as weird as that sounds. And because of that, like I said, my life is completely different than it was a couple years ago. Making yourself uncomfortable speeds up the process of mental toughness. And waiting around for that motivation or inspiration is a slow way to change your energy, your health, and your business. I want to wrap up with something that is succinct and easy to follow. It's the how of self-discipline and the power of self-discipline. Are you ready for it? It's three steps and you can start today. Number one, Plan ahead of time and stick to it, all right? Plan ahead. You can plan everything the night before. I like doing everything a week at a time. Make a plan and stick to it no matter what. Step two, allow for the discomfort that comes up when you don't want to do what you plan and you don't feel like it. What allowing for discomfort means is recognizing it's going to be there and not seeing it as a problem. Discomfort does not mean something has gone wrong. It doesn't mean it shouldn't be here. It is. Expect it and act despite the discomfort you feel. Step three, make your brain complaining and giving excuses to you a trigger to take action now, to make the decision you need to make now, to take the right next step now. That's all you have to do, you guys. Plan ahead of time and stick to it. Allow for the discomfort that will come up. It's not a problem. And then Make your brain complaining a trigger to start instead of sitting there and negotiating with yourself. These three steps will radically transform your life. And I know that should you put them into play, your life is going to be so much different six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, because you will win so many more of your days. And I am so excited for that for you. So I know this has been a bit of a longer episode, but I am very passionate about the power of self-discipline and what it can do for you. So thank you so much for sticking with me in this. If I could just ask one favor before you leave, could you please take one moment and jump over to iTunes and leave me a five-star review and share the most important thing you've learned from either this episode or listening to the podcast so far. Reviews not only give me feedback on what you're loving, but it it helps get my podcast out to other entrepreneurs just like you that are struggling with their health or want to improve their discipline. This one minute of your time really makes a difference to me and I appreciate it and want to thank you in in advance for just taking that moment to do that. But thank you 
for listening in. I wish you a week full of self-discipline and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Ready to begin each day feeling energized and focused? I'd love to work with you one-on-one. In my Becoming Limitless program, you're going to learn how to optimize your brain and body with science and biohacking so you can be highly productive and grow your business faster. Join me over at tanessashears.com slash work with me. I'll see you there.